In a shocking revelation, a top medical professional has suggested that Whitney Houston's tragic death might have been the result of foul play, citing the alarmingly high temperature of the bathwater in which she was found. Whitney Houston, the 48-year-old legendary singer, was discovered lifeless, face down in the bathtub of her Los Angeles hotel room in February. Official reports concluded that her death was due to accidental drowning following a drug-induced heart failure. However, a prominent drug expert has urged law enforcement to reconsider closing the case. Dr. Drew Pinsky, in a conversation with The Sun, presented the startling claim that the temperature of the water in Houston's bathtub was extraordinarily high, even hours after her death. Reportedly, the water temperature was measured at 34 degrees Celsius, 93.5 degrees Fahrenheit, five hours post-mortem, a mere five degrees Celsius below the highest recommended safe limit. Dr. Pinsky told The Sun, how could that be? It still leaves foul play possible. They shouldn't close the case. Adding to the speculation, Houston's family has expressed their belief that her death was not a mere accident. In their grief and search for answers, they have previously pointed fingers at the drug dealer who allegedly supplied the cocaine found in her system at the time of her death, suggesting he might have had a hand in her demise. However, police investigations have subsequently cleared him of any involvement. Whitney Houston's struggles with drug and alcohol addiction were well documented, and in the days leading up to her death, she was observed appearing fatigued and worn out. Despite her immense talent and success, her life was marred by the demons of substance abuse, which she battled for many years. The circumstances surrounding her death continue to be a topic of intense discussion and speculation. The idea that her death could have involved foul play adds a chilling layer to the narrative of her final days. The family's suspicions, coupled with Dr. Pinsky's assertions about the bathwater temperature, have fueled a renewed call for a thorough re-examination of the case. Whitney Houston's untimely death remains a tragic loss for the music world and her fans globally. As her family continues to seek closure, these new claims underscore the complexity and mystery that still surround the singer's passing. The suggestion of possible foul play serves as a stark reminder of the many unanswered questions in the wake of her tragic end. Whitney Elizabeth Houston was born on August 9, 1963, in Newark, New Jersey, into a family immersed in music. Her mother, Sissy Houston, was an accomplished gospel and soul singer, and her cousins Dion and Dee Dee Warwick were also successful singers. Growing up in such a musically rich environment, Whitney was destined for greatness from a young age. Her early years were spent in the New Hope Baptist Church in Newark, where she first discovered her passion for singing. Whitney's powerful voice quickly became evident, and by the time she was a teenager, she was performing as a background vocalist for prominent artists like Chaka Khan and Lou Rawls. Her mother's influence and the church's nurturing environment helped shape her into a remarkable singer with a voice that would soon captivate the world. Whitney's big break came in the early 1980s, when she was discovered by Arista Records' Clive Davis, a legendary music producer known for recognizing talent. Davis saw Whitney's potential and signed her to a recording contract, thus beginning a partnership that would produce some of the most iconic songs in music history. Her debut album, Whitney Houston, released in 1985, was a massive success, producing three number one singles. Saving All My Love For You, How Will I Know, and Greatest Love Of All. Whitney's crossover appeal and stunning vocal range made her a global sensation. She collaborated with numerous artists and producers throughout her career, including Babyface, Jermaine Jackson, and Michael Masser. These collaborations not only enriched her music, but also solidified her status as a versatile and influential artist. In 1992, Whitney starred opposite Kevin Costner and in The Bodyguard, a film that showcased her acting skills and featured one of her most famous songs, I Will Always Love You. This song became one of the best-selling singles of all time and earned her numerous awards, including Grammys and American Music Awards. Her work in the film industry further expanded her reach and influence, making her a household name worldwide. Despite her soaring career, Whitney's life was fraught with personal struggles. Her marriage to singer Bobby Brown in 1992 was a tumultuous chapter marked by public scandals, substance abuse, and legal issues. The couple's relationship was often under intense media scrutiny, which took a toll on Whitney's public image and became increasingly apparent in the late 1990s and early 2000s. Her once pristine voice began to show signs of strain, and her public appearances were marred by erratic behavior, 
In 2002, she admitted to using drugs in an interview with Diane Sawyer, famously saying, crack is whack. This period of her life was characterized by multiple rehab stints and a struggle to regain control over her career and personal health. Whitney Houston's fame can be attributed to her extraordinary vocal talent, magnetic stage presence, and ability to connect with audiences through her music. She was often referred to as The Voice, a testament to her powerful, soulful, and technically flawless singing. Her ability to convey deep emotion through her songs resonated with millions, making her one of the most beloved artists of all time. Her influence extended beyond music. Whitney was a trailblazer for African-American women in the entertainment industry, breaking barriers and setting new standards of excellence. She won numerous awards, including six Grammy Awards, 22 American Music Awards, and two Emmy Awards, among others. Her contributions to the music industry were recognized with her induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2020. Whitney Houston's legacy is a blend of her musical achievements, her pioneering role in the industry, and her personal story of struggle and resilience. Despite her untimely death on February 11, 2012, her music continues to inspire and move people around the world. Her life story is a poignant reminder of the extraordinary highs and devastating lows that often accompany immense talent and fame. Whitney Houston's personal life, particularly her marriage to Bobby Brown, was a source of significant media attention and public scrutiny. Whitney and Bobby met in 1989 at the Soul Train Music Awards. Their relationship quickly became the subject of tabloid headlines, often highlighting their volatile and tumultuous nature. The couple married in 1992, and their union was marked by numerous highs and lows. Their daughter, Bobby Christina Brown, was born in 1993, bringing joy into their lives. However, the marriage was fraught with allegations of infidelity, physical altercations, and substance abuse. Bobby Brown's legal troubles and erratic behavior added to the chaos, and their relationship became a frequent topic in the tabloids. Despite their public declarations of love, the marriage was often tumultuous, and the couple separated in 2006, finalizing their divorce in 2007. Whitney Houston's life was riddled with scandals that tarnished her public image. The most notable scandal involved her struggle with substance abuse. Rumors of drug use began circulating in the late 1980s, but it wasn't until the 1990s that the issue became more apparent. Whitney's erratic behavior and deteriorating physical appearance fueled speculation about her drug use. In 2002, during an interview with Diane Sawyer on ABC's Primetime, Whitney famously addressed the rumors, saying, crack is whack. This statement, intended to dismiss the severity of her addiction, only intensified public interest and concern about her well-being. The interview, which was meant to clear the air, instead became infamous and further highlighted the depth of her struggles. Another significant scandal involved a 2000 incident at a Hawaii airport where marijuana was found in the couple's luggage. Although charges were later dropped, the incident added to the growing list of public embarrassments that plagued her career. Whitney Houston's battle with addiction significantly impacted her health and career. Her voice, once described as the voice, began to show signs of wear due to years of substance abuse. By the late 1990s and early 2000s, her vocal performances were inconsistent, and her powerful, clear voice had become raspy and strained. Despite multiple attempts at rehabilitation, Whitney struggled to maintain sobriety. Her drug use led to significant weight loss, erratic behavior, and a series of canceled performances and public appearances. In 2004, her father, John Houston, passed away, which profoundly affected her, adding to her emotional and mental health struggles. Whitney Houston's professional life also faced challenges due to her personal issues. Her 1998 album, My Love Is Your Love, was a commercial success, but her subsequent releases did not achieve the same level of acclaim. The 2002 album, Just Whitney, received mixed reviews and marked a noticeable decline in her vocal prowess. Her attempts at a comeback were hindered by her ongoing battle with addiction. In 2009, Whitney released I Look To You, her first studio album in seven years. The album debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 chart, signaling a potential resurgence in her career. However, her live performances continued to be erratic, and her 2010 Nothing But Love tour was marred by negative reviews.